Prometheus. No, not Prometheus. I say Prometheus. Ugh. Anyways, Prometheus is scary! Okay, it's not like I'm gonna shit myself scary. It's, it, it is a pretty basic um, premise when you get down to it. Um, while I discuss it, while I eat this delicious sandwich of mine. Mm. Anyways, the premise is this. Well, actually, let's start with the film starts out. Bye. It starts out with some alien humanoid looking creature eating some little some little cup full of uh looks like parasite things. Anyways, he eats them and then his body starts to decay and then rot at like a in the bat just like uh, 20 seconds maybe and falls to his death in the ocean. But we're not really sure if this is earth or not. Anyways, cut to a few thousand years later. We see the Numi Rapace in some archaeological dig, and they find and she finds a cave painting. Huh. Also, by the way, Numi Rapace as a redhead, cute. Uh, she's pretty. <laughs> um, they find some cave painting that dates back to about thirty-five thousand years ago, something along those lines. Her and her boyfriend. Um, anyways. And what it is, it's sort of this depictogram of looks like a person looking to, like, a set of five stars. And you probably think, oh, what does that mean? But you learn later what it actually means. Anyways. We then see a bit of a flashback of, um... Of Numira Pace's, uh, character, Elizabeth Shaw. Learn a bit of a backstory. She was very religious, um in the Catholic faith, and she lost her father due to some accident. That was explained a bit later, but just, you know. Anyways, cut to two years later. Uh, this, they find the painting in 2089, and then cut to 2091 on the ship, the Prometheus, with a crew of 17. Oh no, I know where this is going. <laughs> you see, the character that I really wanted to see, David, played by Michael Fassbender, and, okay, by the way, this guy, like, this guy's an incredible actor. I mean, like, after I watched X-Men First Class, I watched a few of his other films, and then I watched Shame, and then I watched a few others. This guy is just incredible. And this guy's, and he's incredible in this as well. He plays an android that was created by Guy Pierce's character, uh, Peter Wayland, I think. Who essentially, um... Fund, uh, who wanted this whole project to go. And then, um, what happens is, well, he's, okay, David's an android, and right off the bat, we learn quite a few things about him. His favorite film is Lawrence of Arabia. He likes to quote it. Um, everyone else on the ship is in hypersleep. Uh, the guy's really good at sports, really good at the basketball. A couple other things. He's essentially like a butler. He runs the ship. And then he wakes everyone up. And right off the bat, whenever the first person to wake up is, of course, Charlize Theron, Theron's character, who is a badass. She, <laughs> she just gets out of like two years of hypersleep and she's immediately doing push ups. <laughs> hmm. Everyone else wakes up and you kind of learn, you quickly learn a bit about the other members of the crew. Some of them not so much, but you learn a few guys. The one guy with the tattoo on his head, he's a bit of a... a bit of a, I'm all tough and all this. Kind of like that guy from the gray. And the other, and the other guy who's a bit of a nerd. Um, yeah, everyone's a scientist on this. And, um, anyways... And the captain of the ship. The only black guy. <laughs> Don't worry. He doesn't die first, though. Anyways. Then we learn what this movie's ultimate premise is. Uh, New Mirror Pace's uh, boyfriend um, has this, uh, shows this little thing as to why everyone else is here. You also learn that Charlize Theron's company spent owns Charlize Theron owns the ship, and that her company uh, this is a trillion dollar um, uh, investment that they're doing. 
Anyways, you learn the ultimate premise. That K painting you see earlier, apparently that not, that's and it dates back to like 35,000 years ago. That's not the only one that exists in the world. Um, apparently, five other civilizations, each spread each like thousands of years apart and like a th and hundreds, a thousands of miles away from one another, each show each share the same pictograph of a figure looking at some like five. Uh, like a uh, star, and then they figure out where those stars are, and that's where the Prometheus is heading. They find a solar system with a sun, very similar to the Earth's, and with a planet with a moon that has the capability of life. And the whole goal is to find where human life came from. That had me right there. Anyways, I'm not going to really spoil that much ahead. I'll spoil one thing at the end. But this movie was great, I thought. Um, it wasn't as good as I thought it would be. Um, me, uh, Crooner 500, he really liked it. Um, but this was great, I thought. I mean, Ridley Scott back to doing what he does best. Um, it's very well directed. Every, a lot of these characters you really like. Um, some characters more than others. Um... So once they get there, essentially, they go into this cave, and, uh, well, the first thing when they get to the moon, they see straight lines. And as everyone knows, nature has no straight lines. That was from Roger Ebert's review. Um, but, but anyways, they find this cavern, essentially, and they find, open this doorway. David opens this little passage, and he finds this giant statue of a human face, and it is it's scary when you first see it. It's eerie. It's just like, oh my god, a giant human face. Um, and then, um, and then things start to go to shit. Anyways, uh, in there there's like these hundreds of little capsules containing, I don't know what. Later you learn what they are containing. Death. David takes one of these things aboard to, to do a bit of analysis on it. Anyways. Everyone leaves the cave, except two guys get, get stuck in there by accident. Um, what it is, there's a huge sandstorm brewing, but everyone gets out there, but these two kind of got lost on their way out. So they're kind of stuck there for the night. Um, I'll get into what happened in the ship. Anyways, uh, these two scientists are dumb asses. The ones stuck in the cave, I don't even remember their names, but they're just dumb asses. They're, hiding, they're in that cave with the giant face. And then all of a sudden, this little alien snake comes out of nowhere. It looks like a snake little thing. And then the one guy, the one nerd guy, is just like, Come here, little guy. I'm not going to hurt you. And it's like, Oh my god! He's on me! Ah! He breaks his arm, and, and then they cut it. And then the one guy tries to cut it off, and then it's like, Oh god, it's like, a, it's like a hydra. It just keeps spawning on itself. And the one guy falls on this weird goo thing, and then his helmet starts to evaporate, and then... Bunch of other shit, and they both die. Yeah, we're down to 15 now. <sighs> Problems with this movie. It it's like Apollo 18, except it's except not as stupid, and it has actual class and characterization to it. And it's at least raising some good questions, but... A lot of these characters you just don't care for sometimes. I mean, these two... You got to know them a little bit, but not you don't really know what they're doing. I mean, I guess the one guy was like an like like a biologist or whatever, but there's a alien snake and it's what the hell do you think's going to happen, especially in a movie like this? Anyways, but oh, also by the way, Charlie's there and you're kind of shallow. <laughs> Okay, maybe that's a bit uncalled for, but what it is, there's this, she's talking to the captain, um, the black guy, um, he's like, hey, are you married? <laughs> it's like, no. He's like, are you going to be? Maybe. Well, I don't know. He's like, <laughs> what, what, you decided to separate yourself from the farthest thing a man you could find, or something like that? It's like, I flew out here a billion miles not to get laid, and he's like, Whoa, huh, well that kind of sucks, does it? And she's just, she's just like, my room, ten minutes. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay, that wasn't the exact dialogue, that was just me, you know, being me. But what the fuck? 
And it doesn't lead to anything. You don't even get to see it. What the fuck? Yeah, I wanted to see Shardy stare naked. All right, but oh yeah. By the way, uh, her in like she's this, like zero suit type thing. If they ever made a Metroid movie, I want her to be Samus because she looks like Samus and looks great and looks amazing in a zero suit. I just call it zero suit because it's like skin tight. Anyway, Sh anyways, uh, Numi repays, and her boyfriend kind of get it on, but what uh, Michael does, and this actually struck me as to why the hell he did this early on in a scene. I told you, he took that little capsule containing a little, like, gooey stuff, and it contains this little thingy, and he puts it in uh, Numi repays' boyfriend's drink, because he wants to see what it's going to do. Anyways, the guy gets infected by it. Uh, but before he realizes he's infected, before the boyfriend realizes he's infected, he decides to do a little banging with Numi Rapace. <laughs> Something I'd like to partake in. No, <laughs> just, uh, that's a weird review, isn't it? Anyways, the next day she kind of feels a bit iffy. Oh yeah, and the boyfriend dies. He gets infected, and Charlie's here. He's like, he's not coming on my ship. And then, um, well, they go back to the cavern. Then they come out. He, she's like, she's not coming. He's not coming to my ship. And then burns him to death. Um, yeah, a lot of people die in this movie that you don't care for. But this guy is, yeah, I guess. Anyways, you also learn that uh, New Year Face is pregnant. But you learned in an er before the two bang that she cannot have children. But what is she pregnant with? An alien baby. I'm not even joking. This scene is gonna forever haunt me. Okay, look, I... I'm, I don't think I'll ever have kids, because I don't want to know what childbirth looks like. But good god, this was graphic! She has like a C-section. <clears throat> but it's like the most intense thing you'll ever see. Plot convenience, by the way. Charlize Theron has this, like, her custom-made escape pod. And it's like a friggin' like five-star hotel room. And it has an emergency surgical thing. But here's what I have to raise the question. Apparently the thing's only male design. It's only designed to handle men. Which raises the question, why does she have it? Which even more raises the question is, why does she have it at all? Why, why does she need this thing for? I don't know, just plotting means and all. Okay, that's just one thing. I just got, that was just put in there for plot. They just want, I think the writers just, they wanted to do something like that. Let's, let's reenact Alien. Anyway, she gets this thing yanked out of her and it's like a face hugger. Oh god, it's just, it's, it's, it's gonna be forever, it'll haunt me forever. Anyways, that leads somewhere, I think. Anyways, Michael Fassbender learns that one of the alien humans is actually in the thing, and they learn that the thing is a ship. Anyways, uh, they get, they wake the guy up, and then he kills everyone. You also learn that Guy Pierce's character is on there, and about 800 pounds of makeup, and about 800 years old, and, uh, the alien guy kills him. He also learns that he's going to Earth. He's gonna destroy Earth with the alien infectious thingies on the thing. Anyways, New Face, you have to stop it! And so, Charlie Stern's like, fuck that. And then, but the black guy's like, you know what? Let's stop that thing. Then he ejects the pod, Charlie Stern gets out, and then and just goes like something I do, just goes, let's do this thing, Roar Jenkins! And like crashes right into the thing, sending it down to the planet, and Charlie Saren gets crushed. No! Hot Blondie, no! Hot Blondie, what will we do without you? But you learn that the alien he, human thing isn't dead. Anyways, the. <clears throat> New Warrior Place lures him into the pod where the face hugger is. And then they infect, and then the face hugger is like the size of a friggin' thing, and then pretty much attacks uh, the human alien. Anyways, Michael Fassbender's character, his head gets ripped off, but he's still alive. They also learn that there's another ship underneath, and they use that to get out of there. But they're not going home, they're not going to Earth. New Warrior Place wants to find out where these things came from and why they're doing this. And the movie ends. Oh wait, not really. This is an alien prequel. I'm not joking. The alien human thing, after it's attacked by the, the face hug, the tentacle monster, you see the alien. I'm not joking. The alien.
Probably the Alien Queen. I give it 9 out of 10, so is Crooner 500.